So of course we all know that liberals are more likely to be miserable with their lives than conservatives, and of course we know that misery loves company, so that we can then understand at least the logical process by which the liberals decide that they must try to ruin everything that's fun, such as Disney classics, the Trump presidency, being bored and not confused about your genitalia, and the birth of Jesus Christ. And yes, those are in order of least to most important. <laughs> John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Merry Christmas! It's not even Christmas yet, but it is the Christmas season nonetheless, so I will unapologetically spam Christmas cheer. Welcome to Heck Off Kami. Today, we're going to go over some of the ways that the left is going to try and ruin Christmas, why they're stupid, and why they should all receive coal. Some of the things, by the way, that you're going to be shocked to see as far as like, oh my god, did they actually do that? Yes, yes they did. I'm talking, of course, about our first one, uh, the left is trying to ruin the nativity scene by rinsing it in a hearty coat of progressive virtue signaling and including two Josephs. This is not a joke. Also, notice how all leftist headlines read the same. They all tell you what's happening and then they add, and people are loving it, or something else about how people are reacting to that. And uh, they do that to subconsciously influence your perception of it. They do that to brainwash you into the groupthink. This is probably one of the most disgusting displays I've ever seen, and the fact that it's being done in the name of Christmas is just so much worse, and they're really pushing you into a corner, because, like, they're gonna throw this at you and be like, ha ha, Jesus has two dads, and then you really just want to hit him with the, but gays can't reproduce, you idiot, and, I mean, only if, if this were going to make sense, you'd have to have Mary and then another woman, since the story goes that Jesus was immaculately conceived to the Virgin Mary, so there's quite literally no way to have Jesus without having Mary. It's stupid nonetheless, and uh, then they're saying, well, it does make sense, because according to the Bible, Jesus does have two dads. No! No, he does not! You guys know nothing about biblical scripture, and maybe if you did, you wouldn't be doing shit like this in the first place, but there's no place in the Bible that God is referred to as a man, and you should be happy about that! We're not assuming God's gender, right? Uh, since he never declared it. So we're gonna, we're gonna quote scripture today. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. John 4, 12. The reason God is referred to as a father is because fathers were traditionally the protectors and suppliers and God is referred to as such because he is both our protector and our supplier. God is a spirit. He is not physical, therefore he does not fall into the physical categories of gender. Jesus was a physical embodiment of God and Jesus was a man, but God himself is not a man, he is God. God is a spirit and his worshipers must be what must worship in spirit and in truth. Excuse me, John 4, 24. Next one, a uh, principal banned candy canes from his elementary school because the candy cane was in the shape of a J, which stands for Jesus. How awful. I mean, uh, I've heard it also represents the shepherd staff, which I think is a more accurate representation, but I'm not sure. And uh, the policy of the district was that Christmas trees, Easter bunnies, stuff like that is totally fine as long as it wasn't going to interfere with the education. But then... This moron decides that we can't brainwash the kids into Christianity by giving them candy as if Regev was going to go home and say, Mama, I am sorry, but I cannot continue to pledge faith to any others except Christ, for he is my savior. No, they're kids. Just give them their candy. Stop trying to ruin everything. Also, how many Regevs do you think there are in Nebraska, which is where this happened? Uh, I've never been, been to Nebraska, but I'm not of the opinion that there's a whole lot of people that would be offended by candy canes considering the religious affiliations of that state and also their obesity rates, which would compel me to think that they're relatively pro candy, but I can't talk because apparently my state is actually fatter than Nebraska. This one might be the most absurd on the whole list. This left-wing academic, a doctor of psychology or whatever, he tweeted this. He wrote that the virgin birth story is the virgin birth story is about an all-knowing, all-powerful deity impregnating a human teen. There is no definition of consent that would include that scenario. Happy holidays. What the actual f are they trying to me too God? Is that their new angle? Is God gonna have to step down from being God? Only someone that educated could utter something so stupid. Not only because it isn't biblically accurate, but how full of hubris do you have to be to actually accuse God of being less moral than you? The first chapter of Luke records Mary's hymn in which she praised God for choosing her to give birth to the Messiah. And furthermore, God doesn't need consent from us to do something. Why? Because he's God. That's basically it, you arrogant human. Hey guys, if you're liking this video so far, go ahead and click like and subscribe down below. And if you do, I will show you what my sweater does at the end of the video. Should we get into the other religions that have human prophets that raped young girls? Maybe not, because it's Christmas, but 
They're also trying to ban the classic song, Baby It's Cold Outside, and I really think this one stems from feminists being upset that men tend not to desire them that much, so when there's a song about a man romancing a woman despite her relaxed dismissals, they get mad and demand that the song just be removed because it's evil and promotes rape culture. First of all, the song's a duet. It's a romantic duet. No woman is singing this against her will. It's cute. It's the classic cat and mouse. It's the chase, and feminists are trying to ruin it because it doesn't happen to them. Women thrive off the feeling of being desired. Women often will already have their mind made on how far they want to take something with a man, but they will resist every step regardless just to watch the man express his desire for her because women like that. Everyone knows this is true. I don't think it's necessarily bad. I think there's even evidence that suggests that women can convert attention into energy, kind of like how plants... Uh, you know, photosynthesize sunlight into energy. Also, the time period during which the song was written encouraged women to resist the advances of men regardless in order to be a good girl and such. And the line that they used to cite, you know, the rape cultures when the woman sings, say, what's in this drink? And the feminists think that she's getting roofied, but... The line was actually a joke at the time referencing how little alcohol there was likely to be in the drink because the bottom line was that the woman wanted to stay the night there, but she couldn't just admit to it outright unless she said, I'm staying because I want to. So she would have to use the drink or the weather or whatever as her excuse. So when all the old people were like, now dear, what were you doing at that man's house so late? She'd have an excuse. That song is awesome. Stop ruining it because men don't ask you to sing it with them at karaoke bars. Last one. Uh, and very important, they don't want you to say Merry Christmas to people. It's too offensive. Can't say it. And if you're ever bored, just break down the logic of these because it's, it's, it's pretty funny. So this one goes like this. I will say Merry Christmas to people I meet. Saying Merry Christmas to people assumes that they celebrate Christmas. It is offensive to assume someone celebrates Christmas. Therefore, I am being offensive by saying Merry Christmas to people I meet. It's like because they live in their little thought bubbles and in which they constantly get offended by everything. They just assume that everyone else does too, but such is not the case. When I say Merry Christmas to someone, whoever it is, I'm wishing them in the manner in which my culture and my religion does, I'm wishing them good feelings. I'm communicating feelings of warmth and brotherhood and cheer. When someone wishes me Happy Hanukkah, I take it as a great compliment because that individual is welcome me, welcoming me into their culture and their celebration and they're wishing me the same feelings of warmth and brotherhood, but in a different way that's pertinent to them. Uh, I, I have a coworker, really great guy. He grew up in the inner city, and whenever I leave work, he always says, like, all right, man, be safe. And I was thinking about that, and the area we work in is very safe, but the reason he's saying that is because where he grew up, it wasn't so safe, and so he's just trying to wish me well in the way that he was taught to do so. And I'm not offended by that. Why would I be? The progressive response would be like, are you assuming that I live in a crime-infested area, therefore I don't have the money or status to move elsewhere? That's offensive. I'm reporting you. Like, no. Some cultures don't high-five. High-fives are sick. The point is when someone's trying to communicate positive feelings towards you, you can recognize that almost 100% of the time. And you should be grateful. You shouldn't be offended because it isn't universal. Like, happy holidays. If anyone you know says happy holidays, give them socks for Christmas. Socks with angels on them and a pocket Bible. But they don't want us to all get along anyways. They just want us divided by religion, race, Race, gender, sexuality, everything else that you can think of, but who cares? It's Christmas. Spend time with your family and friends. Listen to your Christmas music. I do year round because I just happen to love it so much and express your love for people through dollars because it is truly the most wonderful time of the year. Hey guys, I'm gonna go ahead and assume on good faith that you already liked and subscribed like I asked you to earlier, so I'll show you the sweater. It's got jingle bells on it, so every time I move it, it jingles. It's kind of cool. Shout out Big Man Sam gave it to me, Christmas uh, Secret Santa 2017, Big Man Sam the man. So uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Merry early Christmas, and may God bless America.